My name is Chris Hudspeth. I am your host for tonight's conference hosted by MS Focus, the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Um, we are celebrating our 35th anniversary uh, this uh, over the next few weeks. And so we'd like to invite you to join us on social media and check out some really cool videos that we put together uh, in celebrating um, our 35th anniversary. Uh, MS Focus has been around since 1986. And a lot has happened with MS over that time. And we would love for you to um, uh, we to um, participate and say hello and, uh, uh, and all that good stuff. But um, to join us for that, I would ask to make sure that you don't unmute yourself. Let us unmute you if, um, if you have a question. And we'll be taking questions and things along the way uh, at, the end of, uh, at the end of the program tonight. And tonight is really special. I really look forward to this. We're joined by Hannah Celeste Garrison. Uh, she's mindfulness and uh, arts instructor and freelance artist. She'll be um, with us today uh, doing Art is for Everyone, a workshop for people with MS. Um, if you're like me, I draw stick figures. And that's, that's about where my drawing, uh, drawing ends. Uh, so we look forward to tonight. Um, after the presentation, we're gonna open it up for questions and comments. Uh, Hannah was uh, diagnosed with MS in the summer of 2017, and she currently volunteers as a self-help group leader for the National MS Society of San Antonio, as well as ANCAN, um, Answered Cancer Foundation. Um, she's also an artist in residence for a San Antonio-based not-for-profit organization, Hearts Need Art, that works to bring arts to patients facing life health challenges. Her time is spent with patients uh, at the inpatient setting at a local hospital, and she works to design, implement, and engage with patients, collaborative art projects, group art projects, window painting, live art demonstrations, and patient uh, bedside activities. She also enjoys creating artwork for displays for businesses and private collections. And as you can see, on, uh, as you'll be able to see in just a few moments, she uh, and uh, she has some wonderful art she already has done, and she's a huge fan that I just found out of uh, Vincent Van Gogh, and um, I will let her tell you more about that in just a moment. Uh, Hannah, if you are ready, I will uh, turn it over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, I really appreciate that introduction. Uh, very sweet introduction. Um, well, welcome everybody. I hope you guys are ready to do a little bit of artwork with me today. Um, uh, as he said, I am a um, let me see, sorry, I am an artist from San Antonio, Texas, and I hope to share um, with you guys a little bit of what I do for myself. Um, as Christopher mentioned, I do have MS myself. Uh, I was diagnosed in 2017, um, so I've, I've been been around with MS for just a little bit. Um, and so art has actually helped me quite a bit in my own MS journey. Um, and so this is exactly why I like to share it with everybody else within the community and with other um, chronic illnesses as well. Um, it's just something that I was able to do in order to relax, um, but also, um, I, I guess, sort of bring down my mental state in order to just function a little bit better as a human being. So this is what I try to bring to the world. So let me just show you a little bit about um, our project today. This is gonna be my screen right here. Um, please feel free to use whatever items and supplies you have available with you. Um, I, I have here two different drawings, um, really the same drawing actually, but done with two different types of media. So one of them is a crayon, this one right here. The other one is with marker. So I just use Crayola just because it's the easiest to, uh, to access. You can buy it from a grocery store, um, very easy to find. But whatever you have, please feel free to use that. Um, I wanted to make, I always try to make my projects accessible to anyone and everybody. So if you wanna use a combination of the two, feel free to do that as well. This is your night, please have fun. Um, I think we can dive into it. I'll give you guys another minute or two to go and grab your supplies if you need to. Um, we will not be using any pencils, but if you have pencils, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, my goal for this project is to break down 
something that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. So hopefully you guys will learn a little bit um, more about um, this type of impressionistic painting. Oh, it's not a painting, sorry, drawing. Um, it is very loosely based off of Van Gogh's um, Starry Night painting, which is one of my favorites in the whole wide world. So I have here a moon, I have some trees, I have a, like a grassy background back here, but also something that could be mountains if you squint really hard, it could be mountains, um, possibly snow, whatever you wanna make of it down here. Got some stars back here. And then of course the iconic swirly in the background. So um, here's how you kind of break it down. This is actually how you can break down a lot of Vincent Van Gogh's artwork. You look for the bigger things in the painting. So right here, my big thing is gonna be a moon, right? Big thing right here are three different trees. Big thing, two stars. And a big thing are going to be the the big the big swirly back here. So we will first start off with our moon, then we'll start off with our trees, and then everything else will fall into place after that. So whatever media you decide to do, uh, let's go ahead and grab our colors and line them all up before we actually get started. Um, this I find is a very helpful thing. Let me go ahead and move this aside. Now for myself, I will be using some markers. Um, I really feel like um, you guys would be able to see markers a little bit more easily, but please feel free to use those crayons as well if you happen, happen to have crayons. Um, honestly, if you, even if all you have is pencil, that's okay. All you, if all you can do is watch, that's totally fine as well. So just to point out a few of the colors that we have in our picture, I'll start off with the yellow. Got a yellow right there for our star. Well, star and moon. We have just a teensy little bit of orange, a little bit there. Um, green, of course, got that. We have blue. Now, please keep in mind that these colors that I pull out, they do not have to be the exact colors, okay? Um, I always encourage creativity. So if instead of uh, orange, if you don't wanna use orange, don't use orange, please don't. Um, I want you guys to be happy with your pictures. Um, I also have a second type of blue. So a blue number two, which I will actually use this one here. This is just what I've got, so. Um, I also have purple, take that out. Um, what else? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I also have a teal, which will come out much, much later. Um, the teal is really just supposed to be like a little accent color, much like the orange right here. So again, if you see another color in your collection that you'd much rather use, please substitute it. And in fact, we would love to see um, your, your pieces much later if you're comfortable with showing it. So I think that's it. I hope I didn't forget something. Um, I don't even think that's my MS brain that does it. I think that's just me that's just forgetting things sometimes. So um, I think we are just about ready to get started. And you may or may not see me pull out another color later. So I like to work um, on the fly kind of, so to speak. So I hope you guys are ready. So for me, one of the most important things in this painting is going to be the moon and the second is going to be the trees. So I am going to start by making those things. So, but, but first, first before I do that though, I kind of want to use my finger. You'll notice that I, I point a lot. I point in my painting a lot or whatever I'm doing. Um, let's figure out what's the middle of our picture of our uh, paper. So for me, it's going to be about there, right about there. My moon is a little bit above the middle. So here's my middle. My moon is above the middle. Let's draw a lovely crescent shape. It can be big. I encourage it to be big, but it can also be small if that's what you're able to do. 
please feel free to um, raise your hand on your computer if you need me to slow down, if you need me to repeat something. I am totally okay with that. So again, this was my middle. I like to point a lot in most of my thing, most of the things that I do. Now let's just kind of warm up our hands a little bit, um, warm up our little brush strokes. I'm just going to call them brush strokes, okay? That's usually the word that I default to, even though we're not using a brush. I know that. <laughs> I always just happen to say brush strokes, and I don't know what it is, but I'm making little tick marks here. Just tick, 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 tick. That's just going to be a little bit of our texture. I just wanted you to see how I go about making that. Let me lift up my picture so you can see that a little more closely. Just tick, 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 tick within your moon. Think of that as a little warm up. Everyone doing all right so far? Hope so. Cool. So, next thing, we're going to do the second most important thing in our picture going to be our trees. Now, I have three trees. Um, I recommend that if you want to do more, maybe just do one more, simply because we want to save a lot of the space um, for our sky. That sky is going to come in there much, much later. So I'm going to grab my green. Your trees can be taller. They can be shorter any size you want. Um, I'm going to start it kind of around my moon. Like I'll start one there, one around here, one around here. And I'm going to stretch it a good, a good size down. So I always encourage you to use your finger to stretch them down and just sort of give you an idea of how far to go. Always go from point A to point B when you're making a line. And this part is going to look a little funny at first. Um, I'm going to be drawing lots of triangles that have a line down the center. Like I said, it's going to be very, very, um, what's the word? It's going to look like it's under construction, so, but it'll get there. Now, next, um, our trees are usually smaller on top. Now, <laughs> this part, that was just me drawing really quickly. So usually it's smaller on top though, like this one, go by this tree right here. Look at that. I have a small triangle and then right in the middle of my triangle, I'm gonna draw another triangle. And then right in the middle of that triangle, I'm gonna draw another triangle. And can you see how it's just getting a little bit bigger every time I draw a triangle? Like I said, it's gonna look like it's under construction. Please feel free to, um, if you wanna make it a little bit more realistic, um, real trees, or I'm sorry, real um, pine trees like that, they flare out, like the bottoms of them flare out like this. So just optional, if you want to, you can have it flare out like that. And flare out like that. That's if you want to. Notice how I have just a teensy little bit of um, of line, green line sticking out. Oh, that's not a problem. I'm going to leave that alone. But if you have a good amount of space, I would draw another one down there. Now, all of our trees are going to continue to look like they're under construction um, until we draw all of them in, in their spaces. So my next one, I kind of want it to stand next to this tree. And I'll draw one right there. Then I'll draw one right here. And, you know, if you guys have another room, another uh, space for another tree, then feel free to draw a fourth one as well. 
it will look like it's floating for now, but we'll ground it in a moment. Oh, that's right. I knew I was forgetting a color. I needed to bring out brown, brown for the for the bottom there. I knew it was missing something. So next tree, draw a line going down. I always like to look point A to point B, take a look and then draw your line down. Now, personally, I don't really like it when my trees flare out too much. So I'm going to continue to draw them straight down like that. And sometimes my trees tend to kind of, I don't know, tilt a little bit. That's just me. It'll come together. Just don't forget to always start your triangle in the middle of the one you drew before. Now for me, I've got a little space right there, so I can, I definitely have some room to draw another triangle like so. And last one. I guess I could make this one a little bit taller. So why not? I have the space to do so, so I can do it. I made it a little taller. Let's keep on trucking. Make them, make each triangle a little bit bigger every single time. And then the next part is the more fun part because we actually get to make all this texture inside our trees, just with the green for now, just with the green. Does my pace sound okay or seem okay? Hope I'm not going too fast. Cool, got it. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, let's make some tree texture. So got some tree texture, some lines that go down. And I'm gonna go one triangle at a time, starting with the top one. Um, at this point, uh, just be a little bit careful. Some colors on some brands of, of markers or, or even um, color pencils sometimes, um, some of them tend to smudge a little bit if your hand is, is on the paper a lot. So just be kind of careful with that. Um, you can always help to mediate that or, you know, help to prevent that a little bit by using a napkin if you notice a little bit of smudging. See that? Now, I don't notice any on mine, but just in case, something to look out for. Now I'm going to, from the top of my, of my uh, point right here in my triangle, I'm gonna make some lines that go down like that. You'll be able to see it a little bit better once I get to the bigger, bigger triangles, but I'm just scratching my way down like so. My lines are getting a little bit longer simply because um, of their, because they're bigger. And if your little um, tree sections happen to happen to flare out a little bit, then your tick marks try to flare them out too, at least on the ends. Try to if you can. Just go and tick, 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 tick down. Now notice how my lines, they go over the edge here. That is 100% okay. In fact, that's more realistic. So just so you know, there is no right or wrong way to do any of these projects. Just like that. Scrape it on down. Do that for each and every one of your trees. In fact, this is your chance to make some, uh, some sections a little bit wider. If you wanted to do that, say maybe you weren't really happy with the size of one of the, the uh, triangles 
you can go ahead and flare it out or make it a little bigger now. You do that by making more tick marks. This little technique here, just with the tree making, um, might be a good idea if you've got some holiday cards to send out. Just a little idea. Do that for every little section. I think one of my favorite things about um, painting and art in general is my tendency to sort of look at a piece and try to break down and try to figure out how it was made. Um, I just think it's fun. I just think it's fun to figure out how uh, something was drawn, what came first, the line or the paint or vice versa, things like that. Just something I like to think about personally. There we go. Now that was really fun. Now I hope you guys um, uh, kind of understand a little bit about how those um, brush strokes uh, work. Um, they're really mostly just little tick marks. So we're gonna be doing a lot of that throughout our painting. Some of our little tick marks are gonna be much longer than others. Some of them are gonna be a little bit short, just depending on you and how you wanna put that in there. Some of them are gonna be more scribbles than anything. See this part right here? Scribbles, literally just scribbles. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So before we do any of that, let's actually put, um, let's actually put a little stump. This is our tree trunk that we're gonna put on the bottom there. I'm gonna grab my brown and I'm not gonna worry or concern myself too much um, with these little tick marks that are sticking out, this green part right here. I simply want to draw a little partial square inside perhaps with its own little tick lines, little marks going down like that. Just a little partial square or rectangle, lines going down. Now, the nice thing about not only this painting, but also um, Vincent van Gogh's paintings is that there's really a power in numbers with those tick marks that you have there. So if there's any portion of your picture that you're just not really sure about that line so much, um, keep in mind that there's gonna be lots of little lines. So more than likely, um, whoever's looking at your picture probably won't notice that little line right there. So power in numbers, think about that. Now, we're about to switch it up a little bit. We will um, put in, I would say, let's switch it up to blue right now. And I'm gonna start off with the lighter of my two blues. So for me, since I have these two, it's gonna be this one right here. Just the lighter of your two blues. And remember how I mentioned scribbling? So again, if you need to use your finger to sort of trace out the general area we're gonna be scribbling, feel free to do that. Um, I'm gonna scribble in patches, but they're gonna be longer patches. So if you are able to, see if you can get your wrists to really make those scribbles. That's only if you're able to. So start down here kind of on the side, kind of where my stump is. Scribble, scribble, scribble. One side to the next. Scribble, scribble, scribble down. And voila. Give you guys a moment to do that. If you blinked, if you missed it, I have two more to do, so. Next one, gonna be for right about here. 
once again, start kind of at the corner of this area. Um, I am not going to worry about each patch of scribbles having its own space. It's all going to overlap. So I say, go for it. Scribble, 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 going, 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 stretching. And there you go. Scribble, scribble. And again, if you blinked, I'm gonna show you again. One more time. Start at the corner right there. Scribble and stretch it. Scribble and stretch it. Now, this effect right here, where this is much shorter than this side, totally unintentional, but personally, I happen to love that effect. I highly encourage you guys to embrace little things like that that happen. Sometimes they just happen. Sometimes you're just into it and whatever comes out from your head to your hand just happens. So I say, roll with the punches, go with it. You can tell I love to scribble. So we're gonna do a little bit more scribbling. Now, it may be a little bit tough to see this part, but this is um, some smaller scribbles with green back here. Now, I imagined when I was making this, um, perhaps this is just a small field in the background. So let's make that small field. I'm gonna take my green again, and I don't have too much space. Your space might be different from my space in here. It might be a little bit wider, a little bit thinner. Um, squeeze it in as best as you can. Um, I don't wanna go too far up. Um, perhaps maybe halfway, like half the height of the tree. So for me, it's like right about here. Scribble, 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 and go. Now we do risk us um, losing a little bit of, of the green of, green of the tree to the background. There is a fix for that. There is a fix for that with the dark blue. So we will get back to that. We're not gonna completely lose this area. And again, scribble in the back like that. Scribble in the back, each little space. Now for me, my scribble just ended, you know, it just kind of happened. So I can always put in a little more scribble there if I need to. Don't be surprised if you see a little kitty cat, like maybe her paws show through. She's, <laughs> she's behind me meowing. <laughs> doing okay so far awesome cool good see some thumbs up love it awesome so um let's look at here we go let's look at the background here so this you can kind of if you want to imagine it as a mountain um, perhaps way in the background, you can imagine it as a mountain. Um, it definitely helps to take your finger and sort of trace the path of this mountain or hill. Trace it across your, your trees here. So I definitely still want to keep plenty of space up here. So in fact, if it helps you to put your hand out and sort of measure it, um, you can compare your hand with how much space is over here. So again, use your finger, trace it across before you go over it. Um, use your light blue, light blue to make that line jump over trees when you need to. So for me, I'm gonna start up here. It's gonna dip down a little. Come back up a little, dip down, jump a tree, keep on going. 
like that. Again, jump over trees when needed. When you are ready, um, we're gonna start to make some lines in the background, starting at the, this top area. Now, I'm not gonna concern myself with making sure every one of these lines goes across. Um, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to fill the space. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna fill the space, make some lines going down. And if they happen to cross your greenery down here, that's totally okay too. And again, jump to the other side. Not concerned with making sure every single line is accounted for. Just make some swipes, fill in the space. Now that idea of filling in the space, keep that in mind because we're gonna use that later when we fill the, um, the background. Just fill that space. Got that power in numbers with our lines here. Now all of my lines are going to be following very generally, just very, very generally, the, the direction of that very first line that I made. So this one, if this one swoops up, it, the rest are gonna swoop up as well, like so. If one swoops up, if one swoops one way, the other ones are going to follow suit. All right. Cannot wait to see much later how everyone's doing. Although I think we might have perhaps a minute or so if anybody wants to just hold up their pieces, just, you know, just sort of uh, show off a little bit, like you're more than welcome to. So we have Casey, ooh, Casey. Oh, that's lovely. Susan, oh, that's beautiful, your moon. I can't get over that moon. Thank you, Susan. Oh, Christopher, looks like you have the um, uh, pencil, is that right? Yep, I like it, but I can see, like I can see every single line that you put in there. It's lovely. Cool, thank y'all for sharing. All right, so now let's put a little bit of differentiation. So what I mean by that is, do you guys see the second color that I put in here? I'm simply putting this color in there to make this part stand out a little bit because it's, it's probably gonna get a little bit lost later. Um, if you're using graphite pencil or anything else that's, that's not colored, um, you can disregard this next step unless you wanna go over it and just press down harder in some areas. Um, so for me, that's gonna be that turquoise color. However, this is where you can have some more freedom. Um, use whatever color you want really back here. So I would pick something that's kind of like cooler, kind of in the same family. Like if you wanted to, uh, like a light purple would be okay too. Red might also be okay too, if you wanted that. But just putting a few, I say a few, but that's like 10. Um, lines back here just to separate it from everything else. You don't even have to cover the entire area, just put a little bit in there. And it's kind of the same idea with, um, with our trees back here too. Now, it's a little bit different with these trees, um, simply because what I did was I took my, my dark blue and I actually made L shapes. So L shape first, and then a few little lines off to the side. L shape, 
and lines, L shape and lines on each of them. However, if you if you love the way your your lines sort of poke and peek out beyond your triangles, then I don't recommend doing the L shape. It's just a, just depends on you. Um, I can show you on my picture what it looks like. So you can make that decision for yourself. I'll just show that to you. So here's the L shape. L shape, L shape, L shape, just on the side. It does give it a little bit of depth, a little bit, kind of gives the illusion that there, there might be a shadow over here since the moon is so bright here. So that was the L shape with a few little tick mark lines in blue, just a few. Now, when I say a few, it's like maybe 10 or something. That's just kind of how it works with this kind of painting or drawing. Like that. That's kind of, that kind of gives you a sense of, um, of shadows. Um, Cause like I mentioned before, you do have the bright moon over here. And then you have the dark shadows of the, uh, the trees on this side. So kind of opposites. Now, here's what I mean when I say don't use the L shapes. Um, if you wanted to just on that right, or I'm sorry, on that left side, just make those tick marks. No L shape, just tick marks. That way you can see what that looks like. No L shape, just tick marks. Just to give a little bit of body and depth. So now you can see the difference between the two. It's not a huge difference. It's just a, it's pretty subtle, but you can make that decision. Now for the moon, or I'm sorry, for the tree that's over here on the right side of the moon, on the opposite. Um, your L's and tick marks are going to be also on the opposite side. I don't know about you guys, but I always find it harder to um, make things more symmetrical. Like if I do something on one side, it's kind of hard to make it symmetrical and look the same on the other side. I don't know. You'd think that I would have gotten some practice by now. So for everybody who showed me your pictures, I am like, I'm absolutely impressed by what you've done. <laughs> I hope you're impressed with yourself too, because that is really cool. Okay, so next part, we are going to begin our sky. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, actually, before that, take that back. Before that, we're going to do um, that same blue that you put up here. Just put a touch of it in your scribbles, your scribbles underneath your tree, just a little bit. So just a few there, just a few there, just a few there, and we're good. Maybe I'll put a little bit on this side too. Again, very loose scribbles, shorter scribbles loose short now we can move up to the sky which i'm super excited about i feel like down here was a good enough amount of practice now we can go up and probably start off with the moon first and then we'll make our big old swirly back here and then we'll try and squeeze in as many stars as we can now, if I had the choice, I would have put maybe a third star somewhere, but there wasn't really very much space over here by that point. So it just depends on you and your picture. I'm gonna go back to that same yellow that I started with, same one. And 
let's start to put some longer tick marks that kind of kind of go with and conform to the shape of our moon. So they kind of curve around that moon line. And now I remember the reason why I put that orange in there. I outlined the crescent moon with orange. And that's because I lost it. Like I lost the shape of my crescent moon. So this, this orange is optional. You don't have to have you know, this color in there unless you really want to. I know that for the original um, Starry Night picture, he had outlined his moon in, I believe, like a, an ochre brown. So kind of like a yellowy brown. So if you have that, that'll work as well. So that's how, that's why, you know, I outlined it. So as far as the tick marks are concerned, um, same thing goes for the inside here. We can stretch them to sort of bend underneath in this little area here. However, eventually we're gonna kind of want them to go back to being round again. That one can be a little bit of a tricky thing to do. But again, power in numbers, keep on adding those tick marks. Eventually, just like in this picture, eventually some of my uh, tick marks are gonna be longer. They're really going to define the moon's glow. And if it helps you, it might help you to um, go out here. Instead of continuing from the inside, start going the outside and make your circles from there. Another little tip for anything that you're working on from here on out. Um, if it's easy for you, if you're able to do this, it may help to turn your picture around. So like do a little bit there, turn it around, do a little here. That's just if it's easier for you to do any of these marks. I want you to make your supplies work for you. So if you need to move it around, you do you, you do that. There. I'm not gonna put those stars in just yet. Cause like I said, I wanna, I wanna make sure I've got plenty of space for my, um, uh, my swirly. My swirly, it's gonna kind of wrap kind of around the moon. So we do wanna keep a good amount of space up here. Um, it may help when we do this part, it may help to trace out the space that you have. See, I'm tracing in the center of my swirly, tracing in the center. We're gonna be making first um, what I call a backbone. So it's gonna be the backbone of our swirly. So if I go back, back here, I've got a really good space right here. So I can, if I wanted to, I can make this extra swirly, which I might do that. Like this is, it's gonna be a little extra. It's gonna come out and it's gonna curl right above my moon. So right above my moon, gonna swirl in this big old space here. Now, our backbone, backbone. Let's go ahead and use, you can use either blue or purple, but I do recommend using um, something that's different from the rest of your sky. So for me, it's purple. That's my main sky color. Something that's a little different. Now, going to swipe, swipe, swipe in swirly motion. Swipe, 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 swipe. 
keep on going. If you need to pause and retrace with your finger where it should go, then by all means do that. You can pause right in the middle of your swiping. So mine probably should be down a little bit, kind of like that. Swipe, swipe, swipe. I almost think of this part as um, little footsteps. Like they almost look like footsteps to me because I'm doing one, 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 one. Or one, two, one, two, one, two. The only thing that can be a little bit tricky, um, just be careful with, is like the inside. So this is where it may be a little bit better if you maybe move your picture around a little bit. Swirl from the inside of each curly cue. Take your time with it. You're more than welcome to show me if you'd like. Again, move your picture around as needed. Can't wait to see who you can't wait. Everybody's concentrating so hard. I love it. <laughs> now, if there is ever any um, any particular line or way of making your lines that you don't really like, um, you're more than welcome to show me. Um, or again, we do have lots of them. So we will be making lots of um, shorter lines, but also longer lines as well. And this part here, this is where you can kind of um, practice a little bit if you wanted to. Take that same color and stretch it a little bit on some parts. Like right here, I can really stretch these and really bend these like that. I can kind of really stretch it and really practice that. We'll be able to push back any lines that we don't want with, with the purple. So if you don't like the longer lines, that's okay. You can stick with the shorter ones. It really is just dependent on you. So I can have lots of short ones here. Now, here's a little something. Well, maybe I'll show you for with the next color. Yeah, I'll show you this next part with the next color. I'm just gonna add a little bit more body. Like that. Before we proceed with making our with making our, our swirly um, thicker, because that is what, what I want to do next, um, to sort of pick a spot, make it a little bit thicker in some places. Uh, but before we do that, let's find a place to squeeze in a star or two. Just depends on you. So like I can squeeze in a star right here. Um, perhaps I can put one down here. I've got a good amount of space here. So go back to your yellow and just make like a circle. Circle there, circle here. However many you can fit. Um, I would say if, you're, if your picture looks kind of like this one here and you've got lots of space for two stars, Make sure there's plenty of space in between your circles. I say that because we do want space, uh, enough space to make that glow around it, that round glow, but also fill in a little bit with a little bit of our purple. Fill in those little spots there. And with that said, um, we can make 
a few of these round lines here just to sort of give it that glow. And, and again, move your picture if you feel it necessary. It's not gonna be too big, you know, just because I wanna save space for all my purple, my beautiful purple that's gonna fit around here. So it's not gonna be nearly as extensive as the moon either. Would anyone like to share a little bit more of their progress? Awesome, got some from Casey. There we go, that's a beautiful curve. That's lovely. Elizabeth, oh, I love that you have three stars in there and more swirly. I love that. Like your swirl looks like it was going around the moon, right? Yeah, super cool. I love that. It's very creative. Anyone else like to share? It's okay. We'll get another opportunity later. Totally fine. All right. Now, let's move on into purple now. Um, let's fill in um, some of our, our little um, swirly. Let's put some purple in there first. So I started in here. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start in the middle, basically follow along with what we already have there. You can vary it up a little bit if you want to. Do whatever you need. But basically, I'm aiming for those empty spaces in between my initial blue brush strokes. Aiming for that. This is probably one of those areas that I probably should move my picture around just to make it a little easier for myself. There we go. Now this part here, feel free to keep on twirling it like the inside of your curly cue especially on the other side too feel free to keep twirling it kind of fill it out like that now this next part it just depends on how much space you have and where you have that space so i'll take this one for example um, I had lots of space to make some rounder and longer brush strokes that sort of um, brought down the tummy, so to speak, the tummy of my swirl. Kind of made it much thicker down here, made it look like it had a little tummy. And then I was able to also make it thicker under here because I had that space. Um, for you, it may be different. As you can see in this crayon picture, I didn't really have all that much space, honestly. I maybe had a little bit of space up here to make it a little bit thicker, but that was about it. So it just depends on you. So if I'm looking at my picture, I do have a good amount of space right here. So I'm gonna target this area. Um, wherever you're at, start on top of your, your swirly start making your way outward in that area that you want to thicken up. See that outward, stretching it. Now for me, here's a perfect example of what I want to show you. See, I started to make it thicker here, but then I started to, to move a little further that way. 
and I saw that I have a swirly, a swirly, like a curly cue in my way. So how am I going to resolve that? I have a curly cue there. I think that the best option might be for some of these lines to just stay there, just hit the end of it, kind of like a wall, like it's a, a swirly wall right there. However, I have some other lines that are perfectly capable of becoming one with the curly cue. See that? I just kind of scooted them right into the curly cue and they fit right in. As long as I keep on going with the flow of my curly cue. So some of these, they hit a wall right here. So really it's up to you to kind of um, teeter-totter back and forth with whatever you have. So here's another example. Um, here we go, down here. Say, say maybe I wanted to make this bottom part a little bit thicker. We're just going to pretend for a second here that I, I have more space than I actually do. But maybe you have more space here. I don't really know. Um, but maybe you have a star or maybe you have a tree in the way. Um, here's what you can do. Once again, start on top of your swirly. Start making it thicker as you see fit. So I'm still able to, to go with the curve of my, my curly cue, but I start to get into the space of the, 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 the star here. Um, I can just hit a, a dead end and just sort of not go past that. Or I could also go choose to go with the shape of the star as well. See how I did that? I just kind of branched off, branched off from the swirly and started going with the shape of my star. Like so. This entire picture is all about teeter-tottering off of what you already have there. So I'm just kind of talking aloud at this point, aloud at, at my picture, um, just so you can get a sense of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, I have this moon right here. A good way to go about it, really for anybody um, to start off with, you could start to make those circles with purple start to make those circles, but eventually you're gonna start to um, hit the swirly um, or maybe even hit the, the moon down here. So you could teeter-totter and just sort of go with the flow. You could perhaps make some of these lines um, eventually fade and meet with the same um, shape or the same line that you're that 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 you see in the way. So I started off round here, round with my moon, and I can kind of start to make it go with the the line of the the mountains back here. Now that also means I have a tree in the way. So for me, I do kind of want to have these lines start to curve outward because that's already what they were trying to do. They were already trying to curve outward. I'm just continuing them on the other side. So take your time with this part and please let me know if you, if you would like me to take a look at it. Maybe I can help you figure out a direction to go. See, all of that started because I started off with making my circle around the moon. And then I saw that there were other things in the way. So I wanted to sort of make a compromise, make a compromise with these lines. Some go this way, some start to form with the mountain. And then there's all the rest that we have here in between. Ah, Elizabeth. Did you need help? <laughs> I saw you pick up your. <laughs> I saw you pick up your picture. Trying to figure out what to do with this space. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Let me I see. Have, I kind of have a couple of different squirrels going on. I see. Yeah. So on, so on the right side of the moon, correct? Yeah, yeah I see. I see. So with that part, I would perhaps go with the shape of your moon. And then that sky right there, it's going to be kind of like a wall. So the shape of your moon, and then it's going to hit a wall. You're just going to keep on going till you can no longer go anymore. How do you feel about that? Yeah. yeah but yeah, I, think, if you, yeah, I think, yeah, because it, yeah. But if you wanted to, here's what you can do. Do you think you could hold it up again? Oh, yeah. Here's yeah. another idea. You could also have the swirly lines that come down. Yes, have that sort of very lightly start to droop and shape over the moon. So droop and shape down over the moon. Droop down, shape the moon. Droop down, shape the moon. Keep on going downward till you hit the edge. Does that kind of make sense? If not, that's okay. Go for the wall. <laughs> cool. Purple. There we go. had to fix myself. Anybody else like a little bit of help? It's Doris. I just wanted to share something. Yeah. Um, I had no idea that there would ever be a good reason for why I would have this poster from Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no way. You actually have one. That's beautiful. I went to what's called the Van Gogh Immersive here in Atlanta recently, and this was a giveaway. And now I have inspiration for what I can do with it. And now you can actually. How, yes, I can do it. I love that. Oh, so, thank you, Doris. Yeah. I have I, a good something to do with it. <laughs> you do, you have, you have some more inspiration and I yes. hope that this, I hope you continue to make more artwork this way. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much thank you doris i won't go to waste me and van gogh oh, you and van gogh yes <laughs> very you. cool thank y'all for sharing oh love it okay i promise just a little bit more um, <laughs> um i do have at least for me this space over on this side so i'm going to um just make an executive decision for myself um, and make, uh, make this star an important star. Therefore, I'm going to work on it because it's important. So I'm going to work on it next. I kind of just wanted to outline, well, not outline, but, you know, make my lines around this star. That way it's kind of protected in its own little sky bubble, you know, so to speak. So just kind of go around it. That way, anything that I do after this needs to um, either hit this wall or conform to the shape, whatever comes first. And again, I'm going to start off with the shape of my swirly. Keep on going. And at this point, I'm just kind of talking out loud again, um, just because I'm just sort of teeter-tottering and sort of trying to figure out what to do with my own piece and where to take it. So um, just trying to figure that part out. I do and, and always had liked the idea of making this part much thicker and much, uh, much wider. So that is what I'm doing with mine like so. Now this part, 
it was completely unintentional that these lines kind of look like off the page here they could connect with this part like if i were to take my finger and sort of connect the two completely unintentional that that happened and since i am seeing and sort of taking a look at these lines i can continue these lines this way and it just automatically starts to blend in with my swirly like that and again these lines they just kind of hit the wall right here the wall of this um this starry bubble right here but it, it just worked out so eventually after after 200 lines or so it'll start to work out and again just gonna do what I can to fill in the rest of this space. At a certain point, you, you may start to just start doing things or putting lines in there just for the sake of putting lines in there too. And that's totally okay. Like for me, like I don't really feel like, like doing too much with that part. So I'm just gonna fill it in with some lines. And another, another optional part, you, you can or not, just depends on you. You can put that same teal, that same turquoise or teal that you put in the background, right? Or I'm sorry, in the, the mountains right here, put it in your swirly just to, again, differentiate it from the rest of it, from the rest of the sky. So whatever you have here in this mountain, whether or not it's teal, you can start to put it in here. In my swirly. I'm following along with the same dark blue lines that I started with. I didn't have to put this much teal, but I really love teal. There, now it's kind of separated. Um, another bit of optional separation um, would be a little bit more orange in your, your stars. So just a little dash here and there. Personally, I like my stars the way they are, so I'm gonna keep them that way. Um, that was the last step. So would anybody like to show off, <laughs> show us your work? There we go, Casey, I'm going to, so as we show, I'm just gonna go ahead and spotlight you just for a moment. <gasps> there we go, Casey, oh, I love it. I love what you did on the bottom down there too, like with the with those lines. Yeah, those blue lines, that's so good. And just the way you were able to handle all the rest of the sky filler, that's really good. Thank you. Yeah, super cool, Casey, thank you. Who else would like to show? Yay, Christopher, I'm gonna spotlight you real quick. There you go. That's a really good drawing. I cannot believe that you did all of that with the graphite. Like you're able to dif differentiate the different um, sections. Yeah, all that with pencil. I love that. And you utilize the hardness. So pressing down a little harder versus not pressing down harder with other parts. I, uh, I also utilized an eraser. Look at that. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of technology. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I see Micah raising her hand. 
So Micah, would you like to un, um, uh, show us your camera? There we go. There Is you that... are. There I, um, I, I can hear Can't see you. you yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Yeah. There Hello. you are. There. Yeah, I also go. have a colored pencil, so. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wait. So is that with colored pencil? Yeah, it's all colored pencils. Oh, yeah, the moon really was like way too big, so I tried to go for it. <laughs> like I had a really big moon. <laughs> No, I love it. I love the big moon though. It's really good. But just like the fact that you like overlapped it and the colors still still look like they're they work well together. I think that's really nice. Um, I'm also really loving what you did with the shadows because I can see you tried to pay attention to where exactly the shadows were supposed to go. So I think yeah, that's fantastic. I the in the middle, I figured he was like full on shadow because the moon was right over him. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great, that's a great way to do that. Oh, I love you. that. I love your swirl. It's so good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very cool. Um, anyone else? Oh, Susan, I see you, Susan. Let me uh spotlight you real quick. There you are. Oh man, Susan. Oh, the the moon. I love the outline that you did with that moon. That's so good. Like all the grass back there, the way you're able to really pay attention to the movement of that. That's really good. The way you're able to pay attention to like the background too, like that sky underneath there. Very cool, Susan. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? If not, that's all right. Oh, yay, Elizabeth. Let's get you going. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Can I see what you did on the side? Oh, I see. You, so you kind of like, like compromise by making it go downwards, I see. And I just wanted, my daughter ran away, but I just wanted to share. She. <laughs> too and uh, oh i love it she's so good so <laughs> just so everyone knows elizabeth and i have worked together before and her daughter is amazing at artwork she's so good <laughs> i'm amazed that she was able to follow along too <laughs> so cool thank you elizabeth thank you Very awesome, you guys. Um, let me remove that spotlight. There we go. Um, anybody else? All right. Well, I just want to say um, thank you all for joining, for showing up, um, and and doing this piece of artwork with me. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Um, uh, to see you all here, to see you all participate, and just to be able to see um, uh, the work that comes out of it. It's just fantastic. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something today, um, and I hope you guys continue to do a little bit of artwork, um, at least every once in a while. It's good for the soul. It's good for the mind. Keep your mind going, especially as um, uh, people with MS. You know, we always need to keep our mind um, going and take care of our minds a little bit more than a little bit more than other people, in my opinion. So again, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, hopefully, we'll see you guys the next the next time. Um, uh, Christopher, would you yeah. like to say anything else? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, if you, uh, if anyone missed, uh, this conference or you want to watch it again, it's going to be available, um, for you to watch, uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, also, um, make sure you, um, you can, you can also join our Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram, uh, for times and access for that information. Um, it's, uh, it's also our 35th anniversary, so look for videos for that as well. Uh, we're celebrating uh, since 1986, um, which is probably the last time I did any sort of drawing. So, uh, so this was so much fun. 
Uh, we do have another teleconference um, this Thursday, uh, November 18th at 1.30 p.m. And it's about when your child has MS. It's a panel discussion. So there'll be a, a number of folks on there to, um, if you have children with MS. Make sure you let your friends know as well for any of these conferences in case they have any interest in that. Um, and uh, one final piece of housekeeping, um, please survey that pops on after we log off. I have to make sure we say that before people start jumping off. Um, and thank you so much, Hannah. Um, and please, you I already looked you up on Facebook uh, to find you. So I'm going to like you right now on the Facebook there. Uh, and also, you have a, uh, a website, uh, hgarrisonart.com. Um, and uh, and I love the flowers you did, by the way. That's that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Those are, those Thank are awesome. You. We could do that next time. That would be pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, if you had a if you had a month, that's great. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. <month> yeah, we'll <laughs> do different ones. So thank you so much. And um, I mean, art is is amazing. Um, and and the power it gives people who we hold pencils in our hands every day and don't always necessarily understand the power of, of what's in front of us and you help share that um and things we can share with other folks so i, I really appreciate that um you, any final uh any final thing you would like to share uh tidbits about van gogh or anything you you'd like to well um i do have an instagram as well so okay. um you're more than welcome to join that as well um as far as tidbits about van gogh ooh. I don't know it too much, actually. <laughs> I'm more, it's more like I study his work and like the lines and movements and all, you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, feel free to look me up on, on social media. I um, am active for the most part on there. I don't post as much as I should, but I am on there. So I uh, hope to see you guys around. And if you are on um, uh, Facebook or if, even if you are on Instagram, um, please feel free to post your work. I'd love to see more of it. So I would love it. And the, the movie I mentioned, we were talking about Van Gogh before we started the movie. Um, there's a movie about Vincent Van Gogh. It's, um, and it's uh, uh, hundreds of artists did different uh, oil paintings. And it's, I believe it's called Loving Vincent. Um, is, is the name I think so. It. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Loving Vincent. Yeah, it's a really neat, uh, really neat um, story and just the art is is amazing if you, if you like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys, uh, everyone for joining us, sharing your art um, and, and being brave uh, and, and, and taking, a, taking a deep dive into some artwork tonight. That's fun, uh, very fun thank thing for a, for a Tuesday. So thank you again, Hannah, mm -hmm. and, and um, we'll see you again soon, guys.